TGIF, everyone. Hi, Brock. Surrender, how are you? Hope everyone had a good week. Don't try and make your week on a Friday. I'm not saying don't trade, but don't press. You know, a lot of people have monetary goals every week or on a daily basis. And if you're not there by Friday, if you're going to try and do it on Friday, you're going to be pressing, you're emotional. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, I, You know, it's interesting what we have going on here. Hello, Alexander. Uh, because of this, I've stayed patient about trying to go counter trend on gold. And uh, I think it's going to pay off. Most of what I'm going to talk about today are things that I'm looking for into next week. And gold is one of them. Uh, there's a nice setup on the uh, weekly here. Okay, so I know it's a little hard to see, but you have an inside week. Everyone see that the candle, the last candle, this is a weekly chart. Last candle is an inside candle, unlike silver, which pushed to new highs. And again, a feature of the metals this morning, excuse me. Yeah, you got it, Alexander. Silver underperforming, but it had a much better week. So, you know, uh, when you're turning around a battleship, it takes a little bit of time. And I'd say that silver was a torpedo, so it's got to travel some distance before it slows down, right? So not exactly the, the same kind of uh, setup in silver. It's not an inside week. It's a new, there's a little wick on it. But uh, getting back to the gold, so the most bearish thing gold could do next week is make new highs for a move, take out this week's highs, last week's highs, which I think were 1818, 1818.40, and then start turning lower on the week and take out this week's lows. And uh, the two week off number next week is gonna be pretty easy to achieve. So maybe we have an outside week to the downside. This is just all Nostra Pinkert stuff. And closing a week from today back under 1798 will be the first two week reversal in quite some time besides you know these corrections that we had here, okay? RSI, that's another reason. Uh, if you go even to short-term time frames, Forex scale, maybe the one hour uh, will get back over 70 if, you know, we rallied 1830, 40, or depends. You know, so it's not just the price, and it's a good point. On every trade, it's not just the price. It's how it gets to the price, right? But I really doubt that um, we're, we're going to blow out divergences here on the two-hour. We'll see. Four hour, it doesn't look likely that we'll blow out divergences. Uh, would like to see this stay under 70. And daily, the RSI is still under 70. I mean, we've been diverging on the daily since, you know, last year. This was the last confirmed high. And on the weekly, we're diverging, right? We have been for a long time since here. So, you know, I might blow it out and have to take a little time to do it, but uh, that's something I'm thinking about for next week uh, regarding stock indexes. Looking at the week we had in S&Ps, uh, let's see, still an up week, right? Nice blue candle. Everyone see that? Now look at NASDAQ's week. Nice red candle. So uh, short term, what I'd like to see ideally would be a new high in the s ps uh you know a lot of people are looking for this 88 percent level comes in depending upon where you draw the fibs 32 57 and a half 58 60 32 60 and when that happens that nasdaq doesn't make a new high remember the last high we had in the s ps the nasdaq only did this right so if we get one more high in the S&Ps, maybe we get some type of 
ABC in a failing rally, the reversal close was 850. So these are a couple of things that I'm looking at for next week. And just one more thing, you know, look like the dollar was attempting a turn yesterday. You know, short term, it didn't look bad. I mean, you know, but this too looks like just maybe it's a let, it's a four. I'm not an Elliotician, but we confirm lows here under 30. Maybe one more low, and we never took out um, this low. So, in fact, I would guess there's at least two or three sell stops under this low at 95.72. And actually, the action here gave people hope that maybe they'll be right, but this never took out at 78, the 72 low. See that? So do you think that if anyone's buying the dollar right here, and something I talk about when you get into a trade, yeah, when you get into a trade, do you ever ask yourself when you're getting into a trade? Try it. Where are the stops? Okay. Where are the magnets? Where's the liquidity? Okay, so I'd say there's a few stops right here. And maybe this is it, but the RSI says uh, we could. This low was confirmed on the two, starting to diverge on the four, so we could get a new low in the dollar, clean out those stops, and then turn. Here's your weekly. You know, uh, it's a negative week. Unless we have a tremendous Friday, there's nothing on this chart that tells me to buy it. So anyway, I'll be aware of a potential stop hunt and divergences at new lows in the dollar. And if they don't turn it after taking out this stop, then the dollar bears are going to be right. But, you know, I just uh, can't remember the last time in the last few years where there's been this much bearish sentiment. I mean, I don't know why people think there's a lot of bullish sentiment. I look at DSI and, you know, you're getting readings in the 30s for the dollar consistently was 50, 70 up there. And the euro was, you know, down to 17 and 16. And I think uh, euro USD is 70. I haven't seen that for a long time. So uh, those are my ideas going into next week. Who had a good week? Give me a why. I want to congratulate you. All right. Thanks, Brock. So uh, are, did Forex Analytics help you get that, have that good week? I know a lot of you guys are, are very uh, independent and good traders on your own right. But you may want to experiment, even if you are, going into the community and paying it forward and helping some of the pe uh, people that were how you were at your stage uh, early on. You know, so maybe it's not as much of a need for you, although, you know, I've been doing it for a while and I like being part of a community. Okay, so, you know, that would be a nice investment and a way to, you know, uh, lift some people up and help them, show them a few things that you've learned, talk to them in the chat room about some landmines you've stepped on, and maybe that would help them uh, avoid it. I know it doesn't put pips into your account, but, you know, you could lay up treasure in heaven, and you could do that by, hold, by helping people. Okay, so... So, you know, so completely unselfish. Mode. And I'll tell you what, selfishly, you're going to have a bigger, a better edge in there. Because uh, I will confess that um, I've improved being part of this team over the last three and a half years. I actually think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Okay. So it helped me to be, you know, immerse myself into the great research and ideas and disciplines and like Steve. Okay, no pressure, have a nice vacation. 
So uh, that's my recommendation. Friday is a good day to do it because you have all weekend. Um, I don't know about you guys, but most of my trades for the week, um, I know what I'm going to do before Sunday night or what I'm looking to do before Sunday night. So you have all weekend to go over all this research, you know. There's a lot to there's a lot to go through on all the different instruments that we cover. So you could uh, spend your weekend, especially if you're, you know, uh, of the mindset of not going out and about like life is normal. You could invest this time that normally, you know, probably be doing something fun to doing something to improve your life. And if you're interested in trading, um, I endorse that just uh, immersing yourself in the research and learning from Grega and Andre and Blake and Steve and Stell, okay, uh, will improve your trading life. It's not a guarantee of profits, but uh, even though you can't learn experience, it only happens with the passing of time. I do believe you can learn from the experienced, and our team is that, okay? And in the chat room, you know, you're going to hear more of Polly and a lot of Amanda. And can I get an amen, Nitesh, if you believe? Can I get an amen out there? Okay, you secular action junkies. All right, Blake. So, TGIF, buddy, get to hey, sleep buddy, in this weekend. I think, huh? You know, have to get up. You get to sleep in this Saturday. You don't have to get up to do an Australian webinar. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. All right, Sorry. just reminding you. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, I will. I will definitely sleep until four thirty a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, All right. All right so, buddy. how's it going with you? Good. Good. You know. So, you know, when you were asking people, has it been a good week? I'm going to tell you right now, for me, it has been a very challenging week. Not not because, well, look, look, from a monetary standpoint, I, I, this is another week that's like last week. I'm a gerbil uh, in, a, in a spinning okay. ball. You, you feel like Sisyphus. You, you push I'm, your rock up the hill and then it rolls down. You have to push it up again. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, well, if you look at volatility just overall, um, while wow, equities are trying to blast higher here, um, I'll look at that here in a minute. But, you know, overall volatility is very low. Um, you know, there's a big event that's happening this weekend. And, um, and, and, and uh, you know, I'd like, for example, I made, you know, some money overnight being long the euro um, down, you know, because we, when we were trading down last night at the one, one, uh, 13 seventies, I mean, that was the place to, to, to be long. I mean, down here, you, this, this down here was a place you wanted to be long because it was a 38% retracement. We're in a bull flag pattern, you know, um, you know, so picking up down there made a lot of sense, but you know, I, I've, I've done other things like this week, like trying to fade the Aussie yen when we were, we're, we were bouncing up against this uh, resistance um, the other day. You know, I was trying to fade it up here um, and, you know, that didn't work out. So there's, there's you know, there's going to be good trades. There's going to be, you know, frustrating trades. And uh, but all in all, we're waiting for something big to happen this weekend. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about that because, um, you know, this weekend is the EU, you know, council meeting on the, the, the European Union Recovery Fund. Now, um, there's been a lot of officials trying to downplay the importance of, or downplay the um, outcome of this EU meeting. There's probably, if I had to throw a number at it, there's probably about a 30 to 40% chance you get some sort of breakthrough. Now, what does a breakthrough mean? A, a breakthrough to me means any type of agreement. I don't, I really could care less about the, I really could care less about the, the dollars. I mean, well, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I can really care less about the dollars because that's not necessarily true. But, um, you know, the, the, the market's kind of accepted the idea that there's going to be a, you know, 700 to 800 billion, um, uh, you know, 
fund that'll be available for the EU, you know, um, recovery fund, which, you know, it's, that's close to a trillion dollars US, right? Uh, and then another 450 billion euros of, you know, possible grants and loans that's, that, that's going to be available. Now, again, this doesn't necessarily mean I, I don't care about the, 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 is it 700 or is it 800 or is it 750 or is the, the loan, is the grant um, fund going to be 450 or is it going to be 500 or is it going to be 400? I really could care less about the numbers. It's all about them coming to an agreement. If the European Union can actually just come to a, an agreement, some sort of fiscal union agreement, that is going to make all the difference in the world. And the market is very skeptical right now that that is indeed going to happen, that that could even in the realm of possible things that could happen will happen. So what if it does happen? What happens on Sunday night, Monday morning? Well, I think the euro is going to be trading up above 115. If that's the case, we're going to be trading right above this resistance. And then you're going to be, you're going to find buyers, like, you know, what's going to happen is we're going to gap up here Sunday and then we're going to, you know, do that. Something like that. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of throwing it on. I'm just throwing it out there. What I think would happen on some sort of agreement. Again, the numbers may not be the numbers that, that we all hope for. Actually, you know, that would be my, my best case scenario. My best case scenario would be, Hey, the, you know, they come to an agreement. The numbers are a little light. So, you know, it comes in at, let's just say, you know, 700 billion uh, for the recovery fund and grants of, you know, 400 billion, something like that, grants and loans of 400 billion. And it gaps up and then comes down, fills the gap, and then you can get long. Um, the, other, the, 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 the other scenario, which I think is, you know, probably the higher probability outcome, but that does not necessarily mean that's what I want to happen. Okay. The higher probability outcome is that they're going to, all the sides are going to, you know, argue till they're blue in the face. They're going to say, you know what, we have to meet again in, in a few weeks. And then the Euro is going to gap lower. And um, what happens then? Well, my opinion is if the euro gaps lower, it's just going to fill the gap because what's going to happen is, um, you know, we gap lower. Let, let's say we gap down to 113.50 or 113. The market's going to look at that and say, well, they are going to meet and they're going to eventually get something done because I think the European Union, uh, especially, you know, you know, some of the key leaders um, like, you, you know, like uh, the, the Merkel and Macron, they're going to they're going to want to they, they're going to want that win for the European Union, that confidence. So any type of gap down, you know, you have to as long as they're going to be meeting again uh, in a few weeks, you, you got to be you got to imagine that that, that there's going to be a dip and then you could be able to buy that dip. So. I think that that's what's the the possible outcomes this weekend. Um, you know the 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 levels uh, again. I think if there's a union, we're going to be above 115. Uh, now, if 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 uh, if there's an agreement, sorry, there's gonna, we're going to be above 115. And and if there's no agreement and we have to reconvene in 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 a few weeks, I think we're probably going to gap down below this uh, 1350, probably close to 113. That's what I think is going to happen. And, and the, the, the thing about what happens over the weekend is really going to broadly drive the FX market moving forward. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about the, the, the key levels that um, we, we're going to be dealing with. And by the way, I'm going to talk a little bit longer today. Stelios is here. Steve, um, he, he's had a lot of meetings. Um, he's been doing a lot of technical work uh, with Forex Analytics. Um, if you guys think Forex Analytics is just some sort of simple website that you just kind of, you know, it's like a blog or something, it's not. There's a lot of moving parts, you know, to Forex Analytics. So, it, you know, we have developers, we have, uh, you know, um, a team of, of, of developers that work on this. We have to do a lot of planning for future releases, how we're going to, um, 
you know, um, uh, do different things for you guys, building these tools like the risk management calculator, for example, or, you know, fully integrating Twitter into uh, into your uh, into Forex analytics to, you know, the back end development. And there's a lot that goes into this product. So for those of you that are, you know, even even the simple functionality, what you think is simple is this little icon here where it allows you to join this webinar when you're logged in to Forex analytics right here, you know, at the very top or to our chat rooms, you know, all of this takes work. So Steve has been working tirelessly on a few technical projects. So he's going to, he's not going to be here today. So um, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over the bias chart because I know some of you are like, man, he hasn't even started on the bias chart yet. Don't worry, I'm going to do it right now. And uh, and and then I'm going to uh, bring in Stelios so Stelios can have some comments on on the market as well. So let's um, let's uh, talk about uh, all these specific levels in the in the FX market. So right now, if um, you know, if you use Forex analytics, you know, the last update for Forex analytics technical update for the euro is right here says basic technical analysis, you know, you can, you can click on any of the, one of these updates and it's going to take you to the right currency. So the Euro dollar, um, you know, the highs are near the 114, uh, 30 level. And there's an hourly trend line ahead of the EU council meeting. And we may see a little profit taking here for longs intraday. And that was right here, right where we're at. We're, we're here right now. And that update, uh, you know, came out what an hour ago. So, um, you know, and I was telling all like, guys and gals in the chat room, I'm like, you know, I'm taking some off here because, uh, you know, after picking up down here, you know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive as you come into this trend line. But this is going to be resistance today. I, I actually think I, I don't want to write this resistance as 114.30 right now because I think we still could actually, you know, there's going to be commentary that comes out and, you know, things that could, that could you know, move the market intermeeting as they take breaks and you you know you, you you might have a member come out and say something or rather and I, you know i still think the risk is that we could we could trade up to 114.50 today so i'm gonna i'll write that down as key resistance 114.50 the euro dollar is bullish now why is it bullish because you know we're in a bull flag pattern if you guys you know heard my analysis for the last several weeks especially on the week ahead video Let's talk about this bull flag pattern. I mean, the bull flag pattern points to 118. We're, we're, we're slowly getting our, our way there. We're not there yet, and we're, it's not going to be a straight line. So um, support is 113.70, right? And then below that's 113.50, which are going to be all these highs uh, going through here, okay? But uh, 113.70 is support today in case we get a dip down there. And it's bullish. All right, let's talk about the cable. So the cable, um, you know, this is my chart of the day yesterday for, um, you know, for our blog. And, uh, you know, Monday through Thursday, I try to pick out a, a good chart. And the reason why I brought, the, brought up the cable is because um, the 200-day moving average is right here. Um, this is a trend line from December of last year. And we're poised right below that. Now, if the euro breaks out above 115, my assumption is the cable is going to be is going to start playing along with this dollar weakness and you're going to see a move like this um is that going to happen today no uh is it you know is it at risk of happening today i don't think so we're at a pretty tight range here <laughs> sorry it's got the friday yawns if i made you guys yawn i apologize in advance um we have this trend line that comes in and we're basically on it right now. So I'm going to say that this is support uh, below 125.20. Uh, things might get a little bearish. We are range bound for the for the cable for now. Um, any type of any type of move now in the in the in the pound up to 126.25 is going to find resistance here. And the reason why is because if we do rally like this. We're going to just find this trend line here, you know, and it's going to end up being horizontal resistance. So that any any move up to 126 and a quarter should be resistance. Okay, let's talk about the Aussie. 
So here's the Aussie and let's go over to the hourly. Not, not a whole lot's changed here other than, you know, a lot of lack of follow through in the Aussie thus far. That doesn't mean it's going to stay this way, but I, I have to mention that if the Aussie cannot, I mean, oh, right, let me, let me rephrase that. If the Euro does break higher over the weekend and we do break out above resistance in the Euro, then I expect the cable to break higher. I expect the key, the Kiwi to break higher. I expect the Aussie to eventually break higher. So we all know that this resistance up here is really critical. You know, this is all 70, uh, roughly 70, 50, because there's 70, 60 here, that's 70, 30 here. Um, and, you know, if the Euro breaks 115, we're probably going to 118 in the, the next month. So it's going to drag the Aussie up with it. Um, grudgingly probably but it, it could still you know drag us higher in the event that there's the euro fails then i think the risk of the aussie is if you break back below this triangle support right through here that that's when it gets bearish so for now aussie resistance is at uh 70 you know 30 roughly it's, I'm going to, it's approximate. So if support and resistance was an exact science, we'd all be a bazillionaire, Z, but it's not. So whenever you see the support and resistance levels, just remember they are approximations because like I said, if, was, if everything was super precise, we'd all, there'd be, you know, we'd all make money, but it's not, it's all approximation in all around levels, areas, right? Okay, so support is going to be around this um, 6920 level. That's key. Blake, sorry, good morning. Quick question. I'm not uh, talking to you today. I'm sorry. Okay, bye. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, man? First of all, 6920. And oh. uh, did you say 114.50 in Euro and you wrote 114.15? I. Uh, I'm I probably sure. did. It's I'm Friday. Friday. Yeah. That's Friday. It's it. Thanks yeah. for. That's why but, but you're here. Shell is on top of its game. <laughs> no, no. That's <laughs> I. You I'm know, sorry. and I, we probably got comments, and I'm typing. Yeah, we did actually. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's I, how I, you knew. I, I talk, <laughs> and then sometimes I type. It's, that's dyslexia and lack of sleep. Yeah. All hidden at one time. So thank you, it's, thank you, Martin and Richard. Thank you. It's a thanks, tough guys, house. Yeah. You can't no, make yeah, mistakes. It's testing. a tough house in here, man. I was just testing everybody to make sure. <laughs> thank you all right hey Stella, so i'll bring you in in just a minute let me finish up with this sure sure and, and remember and if there's anything else uh, that i'm screwing up please let me know <laughs> so uh the kiwi the kiwi here is um you know we might be just you know developing an intraday triangle as we're trying to build this um you know this cup and handle bottom line is support is here at uh Oh, this, hold on really quick. Hold on right there. Oh, uh, Goldman Sachs is calling for a COVID vaccine by the end of the year. I just, the guys in my office were just saying it's on Bloomberg. I just, I didn't see it cause I'm paying attention to you guys right now, but uh, I heard heard these guys talking about it. So anyway, all right. So 65 cents, 66 cents, uh, same as yesterday. Um, you know, a breakout above 66 cents would be a multi-year trend line break. As you guys know, this is, uh, you know, from 2014, um, the Kiwi all the way up here. We're above it right now, but you know, a break above 66 cents would be extremely bullish. Uh, a break back below uh, 65 cents, a break back below 65 cents should take us back below 64 cents. So, you know, it's all about, you know, 65 key, 66 key, and it is bullish near term um because we're above that trend line we drop below 65 cents it's not going to be so bullish okay uh let's go over to the dollar canadian huge rally off of the um 200 day moving average yesterday uh huge rally off of that 
And so support at 135 is more critical now than ever. Okay. Uh, resistance for the Canadian is going to be this trend line right here. This pink one, even though we're, we're outside of this longer term channel, it, you can see it's very sloppy. So what I, you know, in order for me to turn bullish, we really got to break above this uh, 136.20. Um, you could you could actually just mark it. You can mark it really as 136.50, but I, I I don't I don't really get too excited about it until we're back above 136.20, and that's a rough estimate. Okay, we have to get above that for me to start going. Okay, you know, hey, maybe this thing's about ready to turn higher. Cable's at its lows of the day, by the way, but we've had a very tight trading range, so don't get super excited. Uh, here's the dollar max. Um, again, this is um, probably, you can probably look at it like this now. This is the dollar Mexican peso. Really, really tight, uh, really tight range here, right? Um, support is at twenty two twenty six. So twenty two twenty five. I'll just write that down. And resistance will be at. 22.68. This is a trend line, so it is very important. And then uh, let's take a look at, uh, I'm just moving my way down here. Uh, let's go to the dollar Swiss. So the dollar Swiss is getting slammed and that, uh, you know, you're going to see that's in the Euro Swiss. It's getting, you know, it's coming off and this is a big rally this week. So um, there might be a little bit more downside left in the dollar Swiss, but technically one thing that we have to pay attention to is the dollar Swiss failed at the 618 right here. You can see it failed at the 618. This is into the resistance zone and it failed right where it should. So, um, that means we just got some housing starts, but nothing that's moving the market here, guys, just, uh, Man, this cable is just taking out some stops right now. As we, by the way, just we're uh, we're taking out stops as we're coming through the trend line. This little moving average here, you know. So, see see if we can expand on that. But this is a nice little stop run into the lows of the day. You know what happens? It's like you know we take out these stops, and next thing you know. Uh, it just rips right back up and you're like, what the hell just happened there? So just be careful trying to chase it lower is I, I guess what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Um, although it could, you know, completely uh, implode to it's the cable. So that's the, what the cable does. Whoops. Let me get over here. All right. So let's go back to the, where was I just on the Swissy? So the Swissy, Obviously, big resistance here at the um, um, 618, which is going to be 94.67. So, ninety four sixty seven, or I'll just write 65. That's going to be pretty key. It's a 618. And then uh, support is going to be down here once again. So this support zone. So I would probably be 9380 is going to come in support. Okay. All right. And then uh, let's take a look at the, I can write down the dollar Norwegian Krona or it's down here. Um, this is, it's just in, in a, in a pretty bearish trend, but I expect uh, this 
920 to be to offer some support here for the uh, for the US dollar Norwegian krona. So that's going to be right here. Okay, so it'll be 920. Oh, the cable is coming under some pressure here. Let's see if it can stand by really fast. See, the euro isn't coming off, and the pound's just seeing a little bit of pressure right now. Uh, Blake, it's worth mentioning um, that we didn't get any, any important data of the UK, but we did have... Uh, an announcement by Boris Johnson, who said that he's going to be giving powers to councils uh, to make their own decisions regarding lockdown, and uh, basically he's giving away power to the council. So this uh, this um, was viewed a little bit negative because uh, it's not going to be, um, a, let's say, a, a, a harmonized uh, total um, approach towards lockdown or not. It's going to be a little bit haphazard and. Um, uh, I think that's one of the things that's driving weakness today in the pound. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I, you know, didn't, I didn't catch that. So like uh, the U S uh, still, you know, different States doing, yep, yep. yeah, same thing. Yeah. Got See it. our results. Yeah. Cause it's without working a so national well. strategy. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, that's uh that, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. That makes kind of actually complete sense. All right. Um, well, let's keep an eye on the cable because that because they could come off here. I mean, we could we could especially if the euro, um, you know, see some profit taking ahead of the uh, uh, ahead of the um, weekend. You know, we could see you know the cable come off a little bit too. Um, let's. Uh, I was going over the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. So. Here's the US dollar Norwegian krona. Resistance right now is at 935. And while we're below that, we just have to imagine that it's, um, you know, we're in a bearish trend here. And you know what? I haven't been writing these down. So this is range down, range bound. Aussie is, is still, I, I think it's still range bound. Cable is, Swissy is, dollar Canadian is, um, Let's see here. US dollar Norwegian Krona is bearish. So yeah. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the US dollar Japanese yen. Like you construct the most huh? objective bias chart I've ever seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's the most objective bias chart. Do you know, the thing is, is the one thing about these bias charts that I love to see is when they're all in agreement all the way around. So when you've got, you know, you've got, uh, you know, the dollar just in, you know, because this is all obviously very dollar heavy. So when it's dollar dominated in one direction or the yeah. other, that's, um, you know, that's, that's obviously really, you know, that that helps us as traders. And when it's a little bit of mixed signals here, like we have right now, everything's. Gosh. Have you talking. ever seen as many range biases? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. You, you, and it's pretty normal in the summertime. That's just, we, oh, we happen to be right. right now. We happen to be in a, uh, a time where it's a very, we're, we're in an inflection point, you know, where we could break one direction or the other. Yeah. So, I think so. Let's uh, let's take a look at the dollar index. Speaking of the dollar index, uh, this is going to be pretty important. So the dollar index is right at probably pretty key support. You can see this um, February of 2018 trend line comes in right at these lows. Um, people were getting pretty bullish on the dollar yesterday because of the, that candle, but I'm still in the camp that you know. We have to break below 9570 in order for us to really start breaking down. So this would be just missed it. 9570 critical support. I'll put double asterisks there because I think it's so critical. And then resistance is um, now it's you know it's 9660. So we have to break above that. We have to break above that in order for us to turn uh, bullish. So it's really, you know, 
very tippy where we're at. Okay, let's take a look at the dollar yen. Dollar yen. Um, this is one I'm trying desperately not to trade because it's extremely messy and ugly. Um, so 106.60 is support. Resistance, as you can see right here, is pretty clear. Uh, that's, I, mean, I, I didn't want that. I'll, I'll readjust that here in a second. And you know, if you think that there's some sort of correlation going on with the dollar yen or anything else, uh, there's not. It's not moving with yields. It's not moving with precious metals. It's, uh, you know, it's just. It's not moving, period. It, it, it really is, you know, it, it really is just kind of, um, you know, sideways here, okay? Hundred pip range, hundred and fifty pip range for a few months. Yeah, it it really is. Um, I'm just going to be marking up these two areas. So 107, 40, 106.60. Uh, bias comatose. <laughs> and then range. Okay, now gold. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting because Dale, I know you're. Uh, you're yeah. more interested in this right here, right? So let's go over to gold. Yeah. Um, gold is, uh, where am I at? Where'd it go? I lost it there. Here's gold. Okay, so here's gold. We broke that trend line, but we could not break through. This is where I think is very important support right now is uh, 1790. And while we're above 1790, I don't think there's any reason to be bearish. Okay. So 1790 is pretty key support. And then resistance is obviously, well, you can even tag a new high and still make it up to 18, uh, uh, 1820 here, but 1818 is resistance, right? So 1818 is resistance and it's bullish. And I know there's, you know, all of these, you know, the divergence, you could look at the gold silver ratio. You can, you know, you can try to, you know, talk yourself out of this being bullish, but it is bullish. <laughs> it, yeah. it still is. Um, and, and I actually believe while we're above uh, 1770, this, this little pink line right here, it, it really is bullish because that's the last time we dipped and, you know, really supported that breakout point. So, again, I uh, think that, you know, you've got to be – you know, you got to be in the, the, the camp of um, this is, you know, we continue to stay bullish until proven otherwise. And, and right now that's exactly what that, that's exactly what I'm seeing with the um, with, with gold, right. It's important not to get too bearish down here, in my opinion. Um, wow. The cables really come off, hasn't it? I'm just, I just, I glanced over at it just to see, and, and this has really come off. So yeah, we're breaking through and we cracked here's where we cracked through some support probably got a lot of people stopped out right there anybody who was long overnight um you know probably just took their took took the cable off here let me see something really quick and uh there's maybe low. uh euro pound's gonna rally back to that high at the 618 level that we came off of yeah, I'll go and take a look at that in a second. Let me just finish up. Uh, let me finish yeah. this up and then, um, you know, uh, we'll take a few questions or whatever. Okay, here's the S&P. So let's go do the S&P really fast. So the S&P uh, is, you guys probably know we're above this trend line now. Okay, it's bullish while we're above this trend line. Um, this... breakout point comes in at 3190 roughly so while we're above 3190 there's no reason to be bearish 3190 okay and the risk is you know we break above 3240 or think think about all the people who got short you know monday you know they they saw that reversal candle they got short the trade stepped up uh 
stuck up their rear end and then they're like man okay my stops now are above this uh 32 roughly 3250 you know we get above that and it's 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 gone right so um so I guess 3245 roughly, that's a uh, key resistance. We break through that and we're probably the next stop is gonna be, you know, 3328, which is the 127% extension of this move. Then there's some gaps that need to be filled up here from what I understand. So those, that, that's what I would be thinking with, um, with the S&P, especially if we start breaking out. So um keep that in mind okay uh let's see thinking that might be i think that might be it for now um and now you you, you talked about the euro pound let's go over to the euro pound really quick and and uh stelius i want to say good morning i didn't get a chance to say really yeah. good morning i know you you, you came in and um mentioned a few things Sorry, just kind of looking around the market. No worries. I have a couple of things to say. So, you know, finish up whatever you're doing and I can, uh, I can take over from there. Oh, okay. So, you know what? Here's the euro sterling and uh, or the euro pound. And we are really challenging some pretty key resistance here. So, look, if the, if the, if the pound is going to catch a bid after, you know, taking out some stops, this would probably be it. This would probably be the area. You know, you can see it. You know enough to uh, enough to stop some people out, right? Enough to rip higher, and if if for some reason we go back like this, then you're going to see the pound bounce a little bit, which I wouldn't be surprised on a Friday late in the day. You know, this is kind of you know kind of the I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the cable rip right back up towards the 60s. You know, just because it's we're in that kind of market, false breakouts, false breakdowns everywhere. So. But the euro sterling is trying to break out. It is trying to break out this morning. I mean, if you look at this, um, this from a you know trend line point of view, we are trying to break higher. So there might be some of this, you know, euro euro pound, um, um, you know, breakout happening. Uh, you know, actually as we speak. So, uh, and I guess while we're above. Yeah, you know, think about that. Well, we're above uh, 9060. It's bullish for now. You know what I mean? So anyway, we'll we'll see. We'll see if uh, we'll see if this can this can last. Um. So yeah, you got a few things to say, Stelio. Sorry, I'm 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 wrapped up here, and let me let me go ahead and pull put up the bias chart so everybody can see it. Um. So there's the bias chart, and uh, so what's up, Stel? TGIF. Uh, thank you. Yeah, same to you. Uh, it's been a long week. Um, a few things to say. Uh, this there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, or more money um, thrown into the whole situation. You talked about the, the Europeans trying to find some kind of compromise. We know what the Europeans are like. They like to argue a lot. We saw that. Uh, <laughs> we saw that with uh, with Greece, and we saw that with uh, Brexit. And uh, you know, I think. It's in their interest. What's the goal of the European Union? The goal is for it to continue to grow. They're trying to get more countries to become members. So in the end, I think even though they're all arguing and bickering, at some point they're going to have to uh, agree on something. What is that going to be? I don't know. But I think they're going to have to agree on something. So I think the euro is probably the risk is for it to gap uh, higher, I think, um, uh, over the weekend. Maybe, like you said, they're going to postpone it a little bit more, but in the end, they're going to have to do something. Um, because it, really, that's the, the end goal for them is to to prosper, right? To grow and prosper. And you can't do right. it by being divisive and not taking the decisions when you have to. Um, so that's, um, that's for the Europeans. So Donald Trump also has, has said that he wants to uh, have another package, another stimulus package, because remember the one that was already voted is expiring uh, very pretty soon. He wants uh, something around a trillion, I think, or whatever it is. Um, so more money being um, uh, thrown at the problem. Uh, meanwhile, you see lots of places in the world. There was a rumor about Texas uh, shutting down. I don't know if that happened. Uh, sorry. Um, no, it's, I don't think down. it's... I think the governor denied it last okay. night, I believe, okay. if I'm not mistaken. But you're seeing, I was reading today, Barcelona is going into what they call a voluntary lockdown. 
So they're, you know, the, the people are urged to stay at home. And this is not just a localized thing. You know, it's, it's, been, it's happening in, in quite a few areas of the world. So in my opinion, there's a lot of money being poured into the system. So that's going to uh, lift risk assets for sure. But there still is a big risk um, hanging on top of our heads, you know, especially as we go into fall. So, um, and also this year we have the elections in the U.S. in November. So it's kind of be, it's, it's kind of going to be like a perfect storm, I think. You know, it's all brewing and we're all very um, optimistic about the markets. And yes, everything's going to be fine. V-shaped recovery. Hell, not even a V-shaped recovery. It's, it's going to be better than before. So, um, uh, but, you know, I'm still very doubtful about that. I hope there uh, are elections. You hope there are. Yeah, that's another yeah. point. Uh, you know, uh all I know is that, uh, you know, there's enough out there for them to be postponed. Yes. Uh, if COVID's real bad in the fall and, you know, they're talking about all the gun violence and a lot of uh, the different cities. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be political, but, you know, if uh, the polls showed me down 11, 12 points, I didn't want to leave. <clears throat> National emergency. Uh, we postponed the election for 30 days until we have order in the streets and uh, people are safe. Um, just something that I've, I've thought about. Yeah, now, seen, um, I, I know it's crazy, right, Blake? No, I mean, you know, look, I think that it's, it's a, the, the, anything can happen, you know, going into the election season. And, um, but I think if the election process, if they try, if, if um, they try to delay it, uh, there will yeah. be massive, um, social unrest. Social unrest. That's, that, that's the thing that scares me um, yeah. more than anything. You so know, you quell it with the National Guard. Anyway, that you know, but I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, everyone thinks like something like that couldn't happen in America. But, oh, yeah. It's, you, it's, you know it's, what I mean? It's, it's entirely possible. But I um, mean, they've called out the National Guard for just COVID, right? Let alone social unrest. So. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely possible. But uh, but let's uh, let's and. <laughs> You know, Sorry, one of the man, things. It's a bad no, trip, no, you know. you know, one of the things I was talking about yesterday, uh, guys, is um, is if the if the market comes under pressure, is that going to equate to dollar strength or weakness? <laughs> and one of the one of the things that um, that we saw during the initial lockdown uh, with the dollar index is the dollar we we locked down right. Uh, the dollar the dollar was coming off. It ripped higher. Through the lockdown and then it and then obviously with all the fed actions it came under pressure and the dollar you know buckled that now that we got that shock out of the way i'm 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 in the camp that if if the stock market starts to come down from current levels as long as it's not imploding but if it's you know grinding lower i think that the dollar is you know will continue Pop. to stay under pressure actually that, that, that's what i was going to say i think unless we have panic like in march i yeah. think the the, uh, the dollar spike is or well you know the dollar movement is going to be much more gradual and it's, i don't think we're going to see that spike but if we do get panic i think uh, we're going to get the same you know i think dxy to 100 plus uh, could be easy again because you know how yeah. markets work right you know if you have a if you have a sell off that lasts you know 7 or 10 days but it's really intense anything can happen Brilliant. Right. And that's where you have to think about what kind of what dollars you're owning and what dollars you're selling, because in a in a in a in a risk off environment, as long as it's not panic, just risk off environment, you're probably going to see less downside in the euro and the cable. And you're going to see more downside in the Aussie, the Kiwi, the emerging market currencies, the Canadian, it's the commodity currencies. And so you got to be a little bit more picky and choosy as far as where you're placing, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to sell dollars, you'd have to sell dollars more against the European currencies versus the, uh, and maybe the yen versus, you know, the commodity currency. So I think it's just, it becomes a little trickier of a game and um, you can't just broad base sell dollars. I think that's where you get the grind. That's when, you know, stocks are going down dollar index might just do this, you know, instead of like implode where a lot of people are like, wow, it's going to go straight down. That, that, I don't necessarily agree with that, you know? So, uh, you know, that's, that's something that, that, um, you know, obviously we're, we're going to be watching as we head into, uh, 
you know, uh, as we see markets move around these current levels. So as far, let's go back to the EU um, talk. And before I do this, I, I just I want to confirm something. Dale, you do not have a guest today, right? Correct. Okay, cool. So we're going to wrap it up here in a few minutes. Yeah. Maybe if we can, you know, tag a couple of questions and then, um, uh, but um, going back to the EU summit, you think there's going to be an agreement to, in principle, or, or or how's that how's that going to work there, Stelios? Well, there are there are um, some uh, uh, some countries which are uh, firmly against uh, you know just handing out money you know, and these are obviously the um, the prudent countries. But uh, I think in the end, there's going to be uh, you know the market's expecting um, uh, uh, what is it, seven hundred and fifty billion. Uh, euro package, you know, how how the details are going to be or how it's going to be implemented and all that, I, I really don't know. But, you know, I I think that there is, it's just the interest in in, in all sides of, of, in all parts of the side uh, is for, for something to be, you know, to be drawn out and, and agreed upon. I mean, I, I, if you ask me what the details are going to be, I don't know how it's going to be. I really don't. Uh, yeah. I don't think anybody does yet. But... Um, it's just it's just a feeling I have, you know. It's uh, it's you know the way the way the European Union works and what they actually want, you know, in the long term, uh, is stability. And they keep saying this, and uh, and and they want to grow. And you know, you don't grow by showing um, uh, uh, how do you say it in English, um, you know, indecisiveness and and not uh, being you know acting as one basically. So, right. Well, you know, you got the frugal four, so we're gonna have to get past yes. uh, the frugal four. So, yeah. um, all right. Well, that's that's uh, that's in interesting to hear your perspective, especially as a uh, Greek and European. So, um, uh, are there any questions out there about that that really need to be tackled, Dale? I I, I have one for okay. Stell. Okay, yeah. so there was a time when Greece was thinking about leaving the European Union in their crisis uh does do you sense that same type of uh energy coming out of italy now well italy you... i have uh, yeah sorry i didn't mean Go to ahead. interrupt no. um i have a few italian friends and um they're all telling me that things are really uh kind of brewing there you know it's uh the the discontent is ra is raising is rising sorry so it's um I think it's similar to what Greece had, uh, you know, a couple of years ago or whenever it was. But um, in the end, when the question, you know, I remember, I, I, I remember vividly, there was um, the um, referendum here in Greece, right? They said, do you want to follow this um, proposed uh, uh, road by the EU or not? And the, the Greeks voted no, but... When, there was, when they were polls, do you want to stay in the EU? It was something like 75% yes. So okay. it was, we want to stay in the EU, but we really don't want austerity and all right. that. Well, you can't have your cake and eat it. You know, it's, uh, it's difficult. Right. But, but I think to answer your question, I think things in Italy are, are brewing a little bit. They're, they're yeah. definitely not as calm as they used to be. And you're seeing this by the political developments. You're seeing new um, or relatively new parties uh, being in power, you know, you have the Five Star Movement, you have the uh, the Northern League, which are on the right side of the spectrum, and th this is a vote of discontent. You know, you have to, right. you have to acknowledge it. Like Brexit. We had, yeah, we had we had the similar thing with uh, with a uh, Golden Dawn. They're called. It's like a neo-Nazi party, and they uh. used to get less than one percent. In the last elections, they got ten, which wow. is incredible it's 1930 people, all over again isn't yeah, it yeah because people area. are people are fed up and uh, yeah. they don't they yeah don't they're angry they're... here too blake would you say americans are pretty angry yeah it, it, very yeah. Uh, and, and you know and it's a whole world it's it's funny i was talking to uh, uh i was talking to my my 13 year old in the pool as we're swimming around and he's like you know and he's like he doesn't talk politics with any of his friends i've taught him you know, look, you, you you can't convince somebody. It's like, you know, you're if you don't talk religion, you don't talk politics. I've always taught him that because it's like you're not going to win with somebody else's beliefs. I mean, it's yeah. it's their beliefs. Like, yeah. you know, hey, you're a Christian, you should become a Jew. Yeah, uh, you know, oh, you're a Jew, <laughs> yeah. you should be a you know Buddhist. And, you know, it's like, what, what, what you know, you're not going to convince me to change my religious beliefs. Uh, you know, not be spiritual in whatever way or religion, same or, or you know, politics, yeah. same way. 
but he made a really great point. Politics has become a religion. Well, this is a 13 year old kid. And he's like, you know, he was telling me, he's like, "Ah, you know, he's he's like, you know, Trump this, Trump that, Biden this, Biden that. And believe me, he's not a fan of either. And he goes, (laughs) you know, uh, and he goes, why are, why do I have to choose one of these two people? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. yeah and, and he's like, and he's like, I think being a Republican or being a Democrat is stupid. He's like, I'm just going to vote when I'm, when I can vote, I'm just going to vote with whoever best fits my, you know, my, yeah. my, uh, my, well, well that's my the future at that There's point. The future. Time. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't have an, he doesn't want to have a party affiliation. Now, granted my, 13 year old is extremely, extremely smart. Thoughtful. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a more, you know, he's not your typical 13 year old. I mean, you can have, he's ever since he was eight, seven, six, you could have adult conversations with him. So that's one thing I always have to say. Yeah. He's, the, he's probably, he's one of the most unique kids around just from that perspective. But it's funny to hear him say, you know, I have, I, I will have no party affiliation. I'm just going to vote with whoever I feel. Um, so, so Kanye West, basically. What's that? <laughs> Kanye West, he's going to vote for. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's like, he's like maybe Kanye West would do a better job than these two buffoons. And I'm like, you know, Tom Cruise has a great argument. Like, <laughs> Tom Cruise has a great argument to be pres- uh, uh, president. I saw a video. You know, he's been an astronaut. He's been everything. Oh yeah, a lawyer. <laughs> you know, he's played every role that you can have in government so he's experienced i i know kanye has somebody said kanye withdrew i knew i know i already know it's i'm just but i but it's it's funny to hear my 13 year old's opinions and it's um anyway all right guys well all right anyway have a good weekend everyone yeah yeah have a great weekend and and remember um th- this is a bit this is an important weekend for the european union and i and i and and stelius you could have some last words here but my last words are going to be be really careful with your positioning because you could uh, this is a gap weekend you could uh the euro could gap up you know several hundred pips or uh, several hundred i think is a little exaggeration it could gap up 100 pips it could gap down 100 pips Either, either yeah. way. My, my, my part and comment on this is that you don't actually have to get an agreement uh, for the euro to gap up. You might, even, even if it looks like they're moving in the right direction, I think it's still going to be um, uh, probably be moving on uh, higher on Monday. But, uh, you know, like one, of our, like one of our friends said, if history teaches us anything, the Europeans never agree on the first time. So, yeah, that's quite right. That, that's <laughs> true. That's true. And I, and I, and that's, and that also will that also um, suggests that if there is an agreement and they have to there is not an agreement and they have to push off the meeting for a couple of weeks, if there's a gap down and it's and it's sizable, I'm probably a buyer. So Do you have the bias chart available. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. like to yeah, take a screenshot of it for, yeah. for the weekend. Okay, yeah, now and, you have to, now you have to join our community, Aaron. There you go. You're committed now. Thanks, Blake. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, um, happy weekend, everybody. I'll see uh, a lot of you guys in the chat room. And um, for the rest of you, uh, uh, oh, let me let me mention a couple of things uh, real quick. If you guys um, haven't visited our, our webinar sponsor, it's Forest Park FX. Please do because they uh, they are are they've been supporting us and allowing us to broadcast these for. Um, for a long time. So if you want to help support us and what we do, um, visit them. You can actually chat with them on Skype or email them right here. They will help you find a broker that's best suited for your needs, um, no matter where you at are, you're, where you're at around the world. I, I love those two. They, I say that these two, there's more than this two guys there, the, the, but the principles there, I love them. They're some of the most professional most hardworking people I've met and I've, I've had lunches with them. I've met them over the years. We've been working with them for years and they, they know everybody in the industry. They know everybody, like every brokerage firm, uh, every, the, the, they, they do. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, uh, I concur. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're awesome guys. So they're, they're really like the, your concierge brokers, if you will. Um, I guess it's a way to look at it. 
So visit them. They help um, sponsor this webinar to make it happen for you. And then, um, and then if you haven't tried out Forex Analytics, make sure you join our community. Just try it out. One dollar for ten days. Come hang out with us next week. Um, and, that should be and, a wild uh, week. Yeah, I, I think tomorrow. I think I say tomorrow. I think next week is going to be yeah. a great week for trading. So, um, Stelios, any any parting thoughts? Have a good weekend, and thank you for everything today, uh, Blake. Thanks for uh, doing the whole show, basically. Hey, you know what? My pleasure. And uh, and Dale, any any parting thoughts there? Don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And you know, money comes and goes. Time has gone to forever. Make it count. All right. That's, That's true. Nice. All right. Make All right. It count. Enjoy. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. guys. See you Thanks, guys. everyone. All bye, right, bye, Blake. You're gonna shut it down. The webinar or sell? Um, or you, want you can. You have to shut it down. I don't okay, know. Yeah, you, 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 All right. See you guys. All right. Bye -bye. All right. See you, warriors. Adios.